Hello, this is Jeff from Baron Leathercraft, and today we are going to discuss a difference between fiber lasers and diode lasers. Laser engravers aren't ranked by power or prestige. They're just different tools built for different materials, based on the wavelength of the light they emit. Fiber lasers, operating at around 1064 nanometers, are excellent for metals and certain plastics. CO2 lasers, with a much longer wavelength, near 10,600 nanometers, are ideal for organic materials like leather, wood, and acrylic. And diode lasers, in the 450 to 455 nanometer range, work great for wood, paper, leatherette, and some coated metals. While there's some overlap, if you have a specialized craft, like leather crafting, a fiber laser won't help much. On the other hand, if you primarily work with metal, a CO2 or diode laser likely won't be sufficient. That's why choosing the right laser means understanding what materials you work with. And if your projects span multiple types, the ultimate setup is having access to all three wavelengths, so you'll always have the right tool for the job. Let's start with wood, one of the most common materials in the world of laser engraving. Here's a side-by-side -side look at a fiber laser and a diode laser attempting the same job. As you can see, the fiber laser struggles. The burn is inconsistent, sometimes barely visible, and in other spots overly intense. That's because wood simply doesn't absorb infrared light well. Now compare that to the diode laser, which operates in the visible light spectrum. It engraves wood beautifully, and in the right settings, you can achieve deep, clean, and high contrast results. If your craft involves wood, a diode laser is definitely the right tool. Now let's take a look at anodized aluminum business cards, a material that both lasers can handle really well when dialed in correctly. The diode laser works by stripping away the anodized coating, exposing the raw aluminum underneath. It's clean, crisp, and offers a great contrast, perfect for sharp logos, text, or simple black and white designs. But the fiber laser, especially a Mopa style fiber laser, like the Montport GA60 I'm using here, can do something extra. Instead of just removing material, it can interact with the surface at a deeper level, even allowing for precise color marking with the right settings. In this example, I engraved an image of a woman with a sugar skull makeup. The fiber laser rendered the design in a striking white tone, adding a unique and expressive touch that perfectly matched the image. That's a level of creative flexibility you just don't get with diode lasers. When engraving leatherette, both diode and fiber lasers produce excellent results, with clear contrast and a professional finish. In my tests, the diode laser required a simple wipe down to remove some surface residue, which is normal when engraving coated synthetic surfaces, but it was quick and easy. The fiber laser, on the other hand, completed the job significantly faster thanks to its high speed scanning capabilities. Here's a project that really showcases what a fiber laser and especially a MOPA style fiber laser is capable of. I used a sheet of 0.5 millimeter thick brass to create a yin yang symbol, not just engraved, but color marked and cut. One side of the symbol was marked in pink, the other in white, and the iconic dots were done in black all using the laser itself, no paint involved. Achieving this required careful control of the laser's parameters, particularly the frequency, speed, power, and the Q-pulse setting, which controls how the laser pulse is shaped and delivered. These kinds of settings are unique to MOPA lasers and make precise color marking and clean cutting on brass possible. The result is a single piece design that's both detailed and durable, and something that simply wouldn't be possible on a diode or CO2 laser. Slate is one of those materials that both fiber and diode lasers can handle, but the difference in quality and speed is pretty noticeable. The diode laser can engrave slate decently with the right settings, but it takes time, and the results can sometimes look a little grainy or uneven. On the other hand, the fiber laser especially the one I'm using here, produces a tighter, higher resolution result with way less effort. The detail just pops more. And it's not just about raw power. 
It has to do with how fiber lasers interact with denser, mineral-based materials like slate. The wavelength penetrates more efficiently and ablates the surface in a cleaner, more controlled way. In short, both lasers can do the job, but the fiber laser does it better and faster, making the stronger choice for anyone working with slate regularly. Plus, I want to point out that the settings on these machines are very different. So the settings on these two coasters, these pieces of slate, were very different. So both of these machines can be dialed in as far as settings go, even better than what you see here. This chart gives you a quick overview of the material compatibility for different types of lasers. Diode, CO2, fiber, and UV. It's not an exact rule book, but more of a general guide to help you understand what each laser is typically good at. You'll notice that a lot of materials overlap across all four types, so it really comes down to your project needs and the kind of results you're after. Feel free to pause the video if you want to look it over more closely. It's a handy reference if you're deciding which laser suits your workflow best. Alright, that's going to wrap it up. Hopefully this helped clear up the big difference between these types of lasers. In this video, I used my Monport 60 watt MOPA fiber laser and my Algolaza Delta Diode Laser, 22 watt. Two totally different tools that both have their sweet spots. The diode's great for stuff like wood, leather, and anodized aluminum, as well as many other materials. The fiber, that's your go-to for metals, plastics, and those really sharp, deep engravings. And, as well, many other materials. Honestly, if you can swing it, having both types around opens a huge range of what you can create. I'll drop links to both lasers down below if you want to check them out. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.